Okay, let's take a look at question number five. So question number five gives us uh, NMR spectrum and a mass spectrum and a molecular formula. Uh, we add up our molecular formula. Remember, the first thing we should always do in a structure determination problem uh, is figure out the unsaturation number. Uh, so if we take a look at this thing, we look at it, uh, we have C11H14O. What's the unsaturation number? Well, the unsaturation number, oops, sorry. The unsaturation number is equal to C11H14 would be uh, four, five. I believe it is five. Yes, five. So it has an unsaturation number of five. That's quite a high unsaturation number. So a couple of things when I have an unsaturation number. One of the things I want to think about Right away in my mind, I know that a phenyl ring accounts for four in an unsaturation number. So I'm thinking that right away. We take a look in the NMR, and we see here in the aromatic region, accounts for five. So right away, I think I have C6. H5 is one of my fragments. That's just this thing. The phenyl ring, okay? So C6H5 is one of my fragments. Now I take a look at my NMR. Uh, it looks a little goofy because I have these peak, these black peaks and these blue peaks. Well, if we take a look and we see that this is at 1 and this is at 1, all this is is an expansion to show us the multiplicity or the splitting. So this is just an expansion of this peak. And this is an expansion of this peak. We should be able to figure that out. And finally, uh, this is an expansion of this peak. So I only have three Three signals. This signal that integrates for six. So I can't think, remember, we try to simplify. Simplify. I cannot have a peak that's due to a CH6 group, but I could have two CH3 groups. So I'm going to put two CH3 groups. As I always do, I like to make my fragments. Okay. I have two CH3 groups. I have something over here that integrates for one, and it's a great big multiplet, okay. So maybe I have a CH group. I'm going to put CH. CH group has three things hanging off it, okay. And I have this thing out here at uh, 2.85. That's a doublet that integrates for two. So the other fragment I'm going to be thinking about is a CH2 group. So if I take a look, I've got, I've accounted for six, seven, eight, nine, ten carbon, and five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. So I've accounted for all of my hydrogens, but I'm missing a carbon. A carbon and an oxygen. Okay. This thing accounted for four of my unsaturation numbers, so I still have an unsaturation to think of, just like we did in the last problem. I am going to assume that I have a carbon oxygen double bond because I can't have anything else. My, all of my other carbons, I suppose this could be a double bond, but what's it going to double bond? Two, sorry, I realize you can't see that. That has room for a double bond, but none of the others do, except for the oxygen. There's still two bonds there. So I am going to make a, a double bond oxygen. I could have chosen to combine my oxygen with
with this to make a C double bond oxygen with an H off it, that would be an aldehyde. I don't have any peaks out around 9 or 10. I assume I don't because I wasn't given that portion of the spectrum. Surely I wouldn't be given a spectrum without missing information. I do need all the information. So these are my fragments, and now I just have to start thinking about how I'm going to put them together. So how could I have a CH3 group that's a doublet? Well, if a CH3 group is a doublet, the only thing it can have next to it if I have a CH, CH3 group, the only way it can be a doublet is if a CH is next to it. Okay, so I'm going to take my CH group. And I'm going to put a CH3 group there. And I'm going to put the other CH3 group there. Each of those would be a doublet, and it would integrate for 6. That's nice. This thing would be a multiplet, okay? And it would integrate for 1. That leaves a CH2 group left. And our CH2 group is also a doublet. So we can get rid of a couple. Let's get rid of our CH. CH3 and our CH3. I'm pretty confident we have that isopropyl group. Uh, and in fact, when you get experienced at NMR, as soon as you see a six, a signal at six and a signal at one, where you have a doublet and a multiplet, you want to be thinking isopropyl group. Okay, uh, that isopropyl group. Now what's going on, it's split into a lot. And we can even see very, very tiny. Maybe those are peaks down there too. Maybe that's on an accident. This has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, or nine. Let's take our other CH2 group and hook it up to this. Okay, when we do that, uh, Oops. When we do that, we expect that this thing would be a multiplet, okay? So we've taken care of all of these. All we have to do now is hook up these other three fragments. I can erase this one. Let me erase this down here. I'm going to now call this thing phenyl. It's phenyl. Okay. So I have two ways of hooking this up. I can have phenyl. Or I could have it. Uh, that's the only way I can hook it up, isn't it? I can't hook it up any other way. I have two terminal pieces and a piece in the middle. That's all I can do. So now what I want to do is take a look at the mass spec. So. First of all, let's take a look. This would be a, I have, because of symmetry, these two peaks are the same. So I have a doublet that counts for six hydrogen, and we would expect that to be at about one. Here I have a multiplet that accounts for one hydrogen, and I would expect that to be uh, somewhere around two. This one appears to be at 2.123, 2.3, and that makes sense. What do we expect this thing to be? Well, we expect it to be a doublet, integrate for two hydrogen, and it's bonded to a carbonyl group, so it could be almost out there at, at 2.8 BPM. There we 
we go. All of this makes sense. Let's get rid of these because now we have to deal with the mass spec. So we have a compound that makes sense. And just to confirm, we're going to take a look at the mass spec. We'll move this up. Okay, I'm going to erase the green circles because they might be slightly confusing. And I can erase these. Uh, we've, we've established all of those. There we go. So, in our mass spec, we have to account for something at 162. We have to account for something at 147. We have to account for something at 120. We have to account for something at 105. How do we do that? So all we do is we take our compound and we look and see, can we break bonds that make sense? Oops. Okay, so 162 to 147, this, first of all, we add up our molecular formula and we see that 162, that's the molecular ion. That makes sense. This is the molecular ion minus 15, 162 minus 15. So if we just cleaved off this, we can break that such that we get, remember this is a radical cation, we can break this to give us a cation, and a radical, we don't see the radical, we don't see this. We lose 15, we would see this cation. Okay? So that accounts for that. Makes sense. This makes sense. That's good. So we would talk about that ion M minus 15. We we need to we need to indicate which methyl group we're breaking off. There's only two. We could break off either methyl group, and that's fine. So this one is simple. That okay, now let's what else can we break? What can we break that accounts for 105? This accounts, oops. So we can break any of these bonds. We broke those, that's fine. If we break that, we're going to lose 15, and 15 is 30, 42, 43. That's not going to get us to 147, okay? We need to lose 60. No, not 60, 57. So if we actually break off this, and we make this cation, and this radical, oops, I'm going to do it. We don't see this, it weighs 57, but we don't see it, but this weighs 105, we do see it, that explains that. So we, we talk about this uh, as being this cation, there we go, we explain that. Now for the last one, a little bit harder, it's where you have to know your mass spec a little bit better. One of the things we talked about when we talked about mass spec, and this is just for that last little point to get the 10 out of 10 on the question, uh, we have a carbonyl group and we have an alpha, beta, gamma carbon that has an H on it. So we can get, we need Clafferty rearrangement. 
in the McLafferty rearrangement, C, H2, C, H, C, H2. I'm going to put an H there and a C, H3 here. Okay. And we can actually get a rearrangement, the McLafferty rearrangement, that gives us this thing at 120. Right? We break this bond here and we throw a proton. Uh, I'm sorry, we make a double bond there, and we break this bond. I'm seeing red arrows for breaking bonds. We break this bond, and we break this bond, and we form a bond here. And that weighs 120. That's the last piece. Thank you.